here we are. So this is the first one that I made from the Down on the Farm um, digital set from TaylorMade Cards for You. And I wanted to just kind of give you a walkthrough of the first one. This one was pretty intense. I did a lot of intense work. Today's video, I'm not going to go through all that <laughs> to show you. But I'm using the, I use the printed paper and then I use some just regular cardstock. And see here, I've made a little waterfall. And I put the little um, Dealey Bob slide frames from Tim Holtz on and I put some just little stuff in the slide frames. I kind of went crazy on this one. Um, and I, I'm going to recommend going forward, maybe not on the waterfall because it this thing gets a little full. <laughs> so anyway, there's the waterfall. And then we've got just the, um, I've got a tag here in this little slot. And I don't, didn't realize that the slot went all the way through, but it's a good thing I put like a little stop on that tag. And then I've got a belly band here, and I've got the pumpkin seeds, and I've got the recipe cards that I did trim down to fit. And I apologize for my video going yellow again. I'm not sure why it does that. It's just nuts. So I, that's the only apology I'm giving for that. <laughs> and then I've cut out all the little ephemera and put it inside the little pockets. So this is all from the Down on the Farm set from TaylorMade Cards for You. Uh, this is a, a hop, so make sure you visit the next person in the hop. Then I've just cut out the little peas there, and I, and I did, you know, I backed everything with paper. Yeah, like I said, I went crazy. I did sewing and all kinds of stuff on this one. Um, that took hours. So, I mean, if you want to sew yours and, and really get into some heavy detail, by all means, go for it. <laughs> but the one that I'm going to show you is simple but still effective. So we'll go ahead and get this put away for now. As you can see how thick that is and then I've just got a little I made that little button you don't have to put a button on it you can just tie it with string or not tie it or I wouldn't recommend a magnet because it's you know it does get kind of fat <laughs> so getting out the supplies here here are the papers now these I cut to um, I printed at 5 by 7 using Windows um, the Windows printing tool um, so it'll allow you to make them any size you want and, um, as many as you want. Well, it'll only fit two five by seven. So I cut the checkered ones down to those and I cut three of them. You could do use the whole page. And then I did two of the farmer's market pages and this is going to be enough for our project. And then I did two of the vegetable planting table. I don't even think I end up using that. Um, and here's the big one. So I cut one of the big one and then I cut one of each of the rest that has these little um, folders and just little ephemera that I had previously cut out. Um, I just printed them again so you could see. And you'll see at the end my printer runs out of ink. There's some with little plums. I love these seed packets with the pumpkin. They're so cute. The other seed packets are really cute too, but my printer ran out of whatever color it decided to run out of, probably yellow. Um, here's the recipe cards, and I do end up trimming those down. And here's the strawberry jam. Yeah, here's, here's the one where my printer ran out of most likely yellow ink because I do a lot of printing in that sort of sepia tone. So there's the papers. I did print those on Hammer Mill 80 pound. And then I've got my template here. And what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting things here. We're going to be cutting a lot of things. We're making the waterfall and the pockets and everything else. So I'm going to do the waterfall out of this farmer's market. So I already cut these down to three and a half by three and a quarter. And I'm going to score those on the long side. And I, I score them at three inches rather than trying to get a half inch in there. So I'm just going to score each one of those and fold it down. You want to be pay attention to the orientation. And then I mitered mine, but you don't need to. And in fact, it might look better if you didn't miter it, but I did. So that's, that's that. So here they are all mitered and cut down. And then <clears throat> I need to work on the base here. So 
I, yeah, okay, good, I did film it. So I'm gonna take an eight and a half by 11 sheet here, and I'm gonna start cutting this down. So I made a mark on my um, trimmer at six, after six inches all the way up to seven inches. So this is just an eight and a half by um, six and three quarters folded in half. So that's your main page. And then you've got the four and three quarters by six and three quarters that you need to cut. And that's gonna be your inner flap. That's the gonna be the page that holds your waterfall. So I'm cutting this down to six and three quarters. I'm trying to be economical here with my paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and score that at one inch. I'm looking for my scoring tool, of course. <laughs> you know how things get buried on your desk. <clears throat> there we go. And then I'm just doing it from the other side because it's easier. And then I'm just gonna fold that. And I am gonna miter these edges. Again, you don't have to, but um, I, I recommend it for these particular pieces. And then, so that's gonna go right there like that. That's gonna be the open flap. And then we need to make the front flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece already glued down. And I like to use tape on these pieces, double-sided tape. And I just run my tape along both edges there. And I run it a little bit longer and then I trim it off. That way I know that it's taped down all the way. You could use glue. So I wanna tape that so that the flap is showing up on the inside, that, that folded flap. And I'm just gonna take this and just fold it up a little bit so I can kind of lay this on here and get it nice and even. And then I'll press down on it and then I'll just pull my tape out and then make sure it's even all the way across and then I'll just make sure and burnish that down with my bone folder. So there's those, now we're, we're gonna make the flat piece. Um, and I'll have the measurements down below because I'm going too fast for me to see them. And I don't have them in my mind. Actually, I have them right in front of me. <laughs> I'm silly, aren't I? So that flat piece is four and a quarter by six and three quarters as well. Scoring that at an inch also. I'm going to fold that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my compass to get a semicircle. You could use a dinner plate or something like that, so you don't have to have a compass. But I am gonna first miter these corners. I'm gonna fold this down, and I like to get like a, a heavy piece of paper underneath there so I don't wreck my um, mat by accidentally poking a hole. So that's just, um, I'm kind of trying to do math to see if I can figure out where the middle is. <laughs> My brain just will not wrap around the math, so I'm looking for my phone so I can do it on my phone, and I get the measurement, but I still can't make sense of it. So what is 3.375? I don't know. Forget that. We have a Tim Holtz ruler, and it has a zero in the center. So what I'm looking for is an even measurement, and it usually helps if you flip the ruler around. There we go. So I can see that it's about three and three quarters to either side of the zero, so I mark the center just with a pencil. I'm gonna grab my compass and that heavy piece of paper and I'm putting my compass on the outside of this and adjusting it so that the pencil just touches the, <laughs> my pencil's falling out, so the pencil just touches the edge there. And then I'll just kind of hold it and draw the semicircle. You can get these compasses at the dollar store. Mine's, mine's an old one. I don't even know where it came from. And see there, I'm gonna just do a little making up for the fact that the length of this piece of paper doesn't necessarily accommodate a full half circle because of, I don't know, math, because math. <laughs> so I'm just compensating by um, adjusting my semicircle at the top there. And then I'm just gonna take my eraser and erase all my pencil marks. And 
And there that piece is done and I'm going to attach it and for this one I want the flap attached to the outside and there does need to be a little bit of space about an eighth of an inch so I'm just going to take my tape and I'm going to tape it in not quite to the edge there or not to, quite to the inner fold there I'm going to burnish down my tape so it's good and stuck down and just trim off the excess same thing only this time I want this flap on the outside And I'm going to go ahead and lift just a little bit, just like I did before. And then I'm going to kind of lay my paper on and make sure I'm leaving that gap. It's not a huge gap, but it is a gap and you need the gap. Now I'm just going to lift it from the other side, pull my tape off, turn it back over and lay it down, make sure it's nice and even. So there we've got our little, our little handbag. <laughs> it could be a handbag, right? Then we've got our four and an eighth by six and three quarter, and it's a little under four and an eighth and a little under six and three quarter. And I decide, first I, th I think I'm gonna do it out of white paper, but I decide let's do it out of the pattern paper. Uh, that's just less work. <laughs> Cause then you don't have to glue something on, but you know, use a th uh, my circle punch to make a thumb notch on the tall edge. And here's me thinking well, I'm gonna do that with white paper again. And that's what I did last time and then I cut paper down and it was just a lot of work because, well, it's at work. So that's gonna sit on the inside like that. I wanna make sure this is gonna fold in and then that one will sit on the outside and it'll cover all those flaps and also reinforce them. But um, now here's our waterfall. I do change my mind and decide I want to do it on the pattern paper with these two and they'll fit there but I kind of want to save that for something else so I'm going to cut them out of this checkered paper because there's plenty of it I printed three sheets so I'm just going to trim that down to the size that I need and it's darn close, isn't it? <laughs> and I'll create my thumb notch and I'll do the second piece off camera. All right, we've got our two pieces. Now what I want to do here is I want to, you know, add some color here. So I'm pulling out some of my Distress Oxides to kind of um, just swatch to see which color I might want to use. That'll go nicely, not, not bundled sage, not old paper. Yep, I'm going to settle on peeled paint. And I'm going to edge the base of this in the peeled paint. And I'll do most of it off camera, but I do want to show you how I do it. And um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you fold in each edge and get each edge. So you want it looking like that and then getting along that edge as well in the folds. So most of this is going to be covered, so it's not a big deal, but, you know, it, it's a detail. And then I'm happy with that, but I also want to distress it with some vintage photo. And I'll do most of this off camera. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, only not quite as deep, and go around the whole thing. And I'll be back once I've got that all finished. All right, that's done. Now I've, I've decided I want to do more to this, so I'm going to grab my antique linen and a lot of these pages will be covered, but the ones that aren't going to be fully covered, I'm going to just fill them in with the antique linen. And I end up distressing these and um, not being on camera when I thought I was. So here's what they're going to look like. And there's where I distressed it with frayed burlap and a little bit of water. So again, most of this isn't even going to show. Um, but you know, so we'll go ahead and start gluing on our pieces. And if there's white showing, just color it in with anything you grab. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and here's, I get kind of sloppy with my glue here today, but I'm just gluing along the edges. I didn't do too bad. And covering that flap on that page, 
making sure that both of my pages can fold. And then I just take a paper towel and kind of push it in. And then I'll do this same thing on this one. There we go. So that covers the flaps, yay. And you wanna put those on first because you want that glue to get a chance to dry before you start bending the thing all around because it does get big. So here's how you glue on the waterfall. So you just put some glue on that folded flap and you see that I went down about a quarter of an inch from the top and then I have it kind of centered side to side. And don't you move on me. Check my placement again. And I forgot, I wanted to kind of distress those. I colored in the backs of them because I didn't want them to be white. But they look funky right now, so I want to further distress them by adding water. And I'm not adding a bunch, just some. Just kind of make it look stained and funky. Because you'll be gluing stuff onto these anyway. So then I'm going to go ahead and just glue each piece down. So you see, you just use the last piece you glued down as a guide to glue down the next one. Just make sure they're all nice and even. Give it a good press and get it with your bone folder. And I did the rest of that off camera. So um, now what I want to do is I want to make a tie for it. So I've got this piece of sari ribbon. I get mine on Amazon and I buy a lot of it in one shot and it's cheap. But you could use ribbon, you could skip this step, whatever you want. But I had cut out the strawberry jam and I had distressed it off camera. I'm gonna glue that right on top of there. And then the same thing with the peas, I cut out the pea packet, <laughs> the peas packet and distress the edges. And I'm gonna glue that down onto there and just, you know, not, kind of make it even-ish and then I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to staple the ribbon. I just don't like anything bad to happen to my ribbon. <laughs> and then you notice I've got a longer piece so what I'm going to be doing is gluing that um, or gluing ends or actually stapling the other end of that piece of ribbon onto the um, top. And I'm just folding it over and grabbing my stapler I'm giving it a clip. Now I've got the little Tim Holtz mini stapler with the mini staples. You could probably use a regular stapler. You could glue it. You could, you know, attach it however you want to. So there we go. We've got our waterfall and it's nice and secure. And I don't mind things sticking out. Not at all. So I've got this farm set. Um, I think it's called Down on the Farm as well. Or maybe just on the farm. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> this is from Tim Holtz, and I'm going to stamp some on this, um, on this flap. And I'm just going to use Vintage Photo, and the flap, flap is going to be bumpy. In hindsight, I probably could have stamped that flap before I put down my waterfall, but I didn't, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and just stamp that down, and I am wiggling it, and I don't mind if it's a little messy, not a bit. Let me see. Let's grab the... Let's grab the sheep. Yeah, well, I'm going to do the sheep right there. I rarely have an occasion to use these stamps, so I'm happy to get them out. I really like them. <laughs> All right, so now I've got to, um, I'm going to do a button. Um, and the way that I like to do them, and, and again, this is optional. You can use a regular button, but I'm going to take and use that small um planting table and I'm going to use my one inch circle punch. I'm going to punch it out and then I'm going to punch out four more out of scraps. So I've got a scrap piece right there. And then I'm just going to glue them all together with the pattern piece on top. And I just kind of hold them in my hand so they stay kind of steady and don't slippy slide around. Just make sure they're all nice and even. I'm going to give it a push, trying to make sure I'm not sliding it around any. And then I'm going to just distress the edges of that with my um, Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Just to kind of make it blend in and cover up all that white and kind of might almost look like a button. <laughs> 
and I get a little bit in the middle too because I like it that way. And then I've got this little teeny tiny punch. I think I got it on Amazon. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball where the center is. It's not, not crucial to get it perfect, but that thing managed to cut through five pieces of paper, so I'm happy about that. Now I'm going to decide on placement there on my flat. I'm going to grab one of my little brads. I have some longer leg brads and they'd probably be better, but I don't know where they are. Well, I do know where they are. I just can't go get them. So I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want to put that as well. I'm not measuring. You could measure if you want to. So I made a mental note and I'm just grabbing my pokey tool and poking a hole and then just running my um, little brad through there and opening up its little legs. And we'll cover that later. So what we want to do next is we want to get the inside flaps. So I'm going to just move some things out of my way here. And, and you see how these flaps, they graduate. So each one's an inch shorter than the other. And I don't know, I cut it wrong <laughs> first time, but it's easy to trim off. So I'm going to make the tallest one with the tall, with the big paper, the medium one with the checkered paper, and then the small one with the farmer's market paper because I'm running low on that. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to cut this to uh, five and a fourth by four and an eighth scant so maybe a little bit under and I'm just kind of deciding because I know that I'm going to be cutting a slant in this and I'll be cutting off most of what you're seeing there on the planting table so we're going to have a piece that's that length and I'm just double checking that I've got my length proper and then I'll do my four four and an eighth inch piece Okay, yeah, see, I probably could have gone a little bit shorter with that, but I didn't, so I could, I get it later. <laughs> I mean, there's no, no hard and fast rule on how to do something like this. You really just kind of do what you want. All right, I've got my pieces here. And what I want to do now is I want to cut the slant. So I'm going to take my ruler that's buried I'm going to make a little mark at three quarters inch on the top right and then two inches down on the on the top left and that's going to be my guide for my trimmer to trim that uh, curve uh, well that's not really a curve it's a I don't know it's a slant it's a kind of a miter and then instead of measuring again I just kind of line those up and I draw a pencil mark and then I cut at the pencil mark because yeah easier faster just making sure that they look even. Yep, they're looking good. And then I'll do the exact same process with the next one. And give it a chop. Well, try to give it a chop anyway. So that's going to go together like that. And I will want to distress the edges there. But see, I decide that piece is too tall. So I trim off about... I don't know, about a half an inch, because I want them to be kind of uniform looking. There we go. So I'll just dress those off camera, and here we are. Now we're gonna put them together, but I wanna put something in that empty space up there. So I'm gonna grab my farm stamps again, and I think I'm gonna use this little number card thingy here. And let me grab a bigger platform here, and I'm going to use the um, vintage photo again. I don't want a bunch of black on this. Let me just go up a little so it's not perfect. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. That's good. I want something right there. Let's grab the chicken. Oh, yes, the chicken. Love that chicken. <laughs> And we'll go ahead and just stamp chicken down right here. Bok, bok, bok. There we go. <laughs> and then you just want to glue the two straight sides down, starting with the tallest one first, and then you just pile them right on top of each other. And I, I like to take a paper towel to press it down because then it gets up any excess glue. 
do the second one. Make sure they're even at the bottom and sides. And the littlest one. Okay, there we go. I like the way that looks. I really like it. So now I want to cover that brad. So I'm going to grab one of the papers with the ephemera in it. And I want to do this little chicken egg thing. So I'm just going to cut it out real quick. Then I'll distress it and glue it down. Yes, where did my little tool go? <laughs> that thing disappears on me all the time. Well, I've got the rounded one, so I'll just use the rounded one. I like the flat one for distressing the edges because it just... I don't know, it gets more ink on. And I'm just gonna, real simple, glue this down. There we go. Now it's a little tricky because it's on a button. You know, the button's on the other side and there's a bumpy edge. I'm just gonna pick it up and press down on the button to get it glued down there. And then I decide I'm not happy with that, that right there being plain. So I'm going to go ahead and use the checkered paper for that as well. I think I just wasn't happy because the peeled paint um, oxide after I had gotten it wet kind of turned blue uh, in spots that I didn't want it to. So look, if you don't like something, change it. That's, uh, that's my philosophy and I'm sticking to it. So I will distress that out and I will glue it down as well. There, I found my tool. <laughs> it was, it rolled away somewhere. See how much better that flat foam tool does for edge distressing? Yeah, it's way better. And I will just glue this piece down. We are almost done. Now, granted, I do have this sped up and the first journal I did, or the first folio I did this morning, took me a good three or four hours because, you know, I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking and deciding and sewing and changing and inking and all kinds of stuff. So now we just want to make our belly band. And I just want it just a tiny bit smaller than that slotted piece. So I decide this piece is big enough. Because it has a pattern orientation, I didn't want, to go, want it to go um, the wrong way. So that is an inch by four inches right there. And I'll just distress that because that, of course, is our belly band. Oh, there goes my camera again. I don't know what is going on there. It's kind of a weird day. It's like sunny, not sunny, sunny, not sunny. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to steal the ephemera from the other ones so we can see what it looks like with its goodies in there. because you don't want to sit here and watch me cut them out. And I've already cut them out once. I don't want to cut them out again. Here's my little recipe cards. And I did trim those down to fit. There's our pumpkin seeds. Here's our tag. For whatever reason, I have a real fight putting that tag in. It's like my glue went too far or something. But I finally get it. And again, I don't mind if it sticks out a little bit. But I'm not quite sure why it's not going in, but it sure is giving me a fight. And then I've got this other piece that I had in the back, which is another one of those planting tables. And I do end up having to trim that down because it's just absolutely going to fight me going in there. So I'll just trim it down a little bit. There's still room to trim. Yeah, I'm looking at it going, why will this not go in? But when I stand it up, it decides it's going to go in. And yeah, things are a little tight at first. Once you start pulling things in and out, then it loosens up. So I just want to get that in there. And that's it. I'm going to borrow the string from the other one. And we'll tie it up and see how it looks. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by, watching my video. Make sure to visit Tailor Made Cards for You um, to pick up this digital set and many others. And don't forget to um, click the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to my channel. 
And then um, this is a hop, so I will have the rest of the hop participants link below, or at very least the, the next person in the hop. And here's just kind of a quick walkthrough of what we just did. You can save 20% on the um, digitals using the code CHALLENGE2022 and participate in the monthly challenge over at TaylorMade Cards for you. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.